Hi, I'm Alan McInally, ex-professional football player with Villa, Celtic and Bayern Munich and Sky Sports Soccer Saturday Pundit and welcome to Betsafe's Week 6 Premier League Preview with myself and former Arsenal in Manchester City and my, of course, my co-presenter Paul Dickoff. Uh, coming to you live from the Etihad Stadium, of course, Betsafe is the official betting partner of uh, Premier League Giants Manchester City great round last week Liverpool beating Chelsea Watford inflicting a third consecutive uh, defeat on Mourinho's United and of course another sublime performance by Manchester City your beloved Manchester City but I will mention Paul and we're going to get into these later on Watford, West Brom and Palace big wins for them too weren't they what a treble that would have been last yeah, week that would have been a great treble which incidentally speaking about trebles I and I got, I, I got a bit of stick for this because my treble was only 11 to 4 it was Leicester, Spurs and Southampton of course they all won uh, I must admit I'm delighted with that to get it right I know 11 to 4 was a bit uh, skinny uh, and because of that I've stuck my, le my neck on the line this week but yeah nice to get the uh, the, the, the treble up uh, and remember that season off a score draw refund if you have a correct score result on Manchester City and it finishes in a score draw then Betsafe will guarantee your money back um, let's get right into it then your treble the first one for you is Everton who are at Bournemouth. Yeah, liking the look of them. You know, we, I think we spoke a couple of weeks ago about the impact Roman Koeman's Co Co had there. Mm -hmm. um, playing some great football, Lukaku back scoring. Um, he's handled Ross Barkley really well. You know, yeah. took, whipped him off well, at mentioned they got beaten in, in the week, though, didn't they? They got beaten in the cup by Norwich at yeah, home. Yeah, they, they did. They made a few changes, and I don't mm. think... I think the way they've started the Premier League this year, they won't be too bothered about that. But um, it was a big statement taking Ross Barkley off. I yeah. think it was the Sunderland game, half-time. They went on and won 3-0. Yeah. Everybody was expecting him to leave him out. Great management, put some in, and it was outstanding. And I was going to say it's a bit like Pep Guardiola. Sorry to interrupt, Paul, because he's 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 making sure everybody is very aware of who the boss is. Absolutely, and if you if you hear what came out last last season, I think there was a bit too much player power yeah. there, and um, Ronald Koeman's went in there and, and stamped all that out. But I just I think Everton are going to be up there this year. I really do. I think. Up there at the moment, second, three yep. one over Borough. Yeah, playing some great stuff, solid at the back, and you know Lukaku is the main man, isn't he? Bournemouth got a bit of a doing by City, didn't they? Yeah, they did. But I think any team at the minute coming here yeah. um, will get that. But Bournemouth will be fine this year. You know, got some good signings, mm -hmm. got some good players, and, and a really top manager there. But I just I fancy Everton to go down there. It's a good bit. Right incidentally, just to give you the odds, Bournemouth are thirteen to five. The draws five to two. Eleven to ten against Everton. It's a wow. big price. Yeah. That's a massive price. Just a quick one. If you fancy a correct score. I just took one out of the pack. I was like 2 1 Everton, 70 90 10. So you're getting almost 8 to 1 that. But I must admit, the wee man's tempted me hugely on Everton there at 11 to 10. Your second one, and maybe unsurprisingly, and it's going to be a tough season for, season for Swansea, you've gone for City. I think he's trying to get his treble up. That's yeah. right. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, they're impressed, but being really impressive as well, man. City, but, aren't being sensational, Alan. You know, and we touched on it last week. The biggest thing for me, the last three games, we beat United um, with no Aguero. Um, Munch yeah. glad back with no Aguero and no Silva. Mm -hmm. And again on at the weekend, no Aguero, no Silva. Um, and th their squad is, is just frightening. And eight of the starters in all the games were here last year. So t for me, it just shows you how m what a magnificent manager Pep Guardiola mm -hmm. is. But, but give the players a lot of credit as well yeah. because um, they have bought in very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. People kept saying it takes time, it takes time. They're, they're looking phenomenal at the minute. City 3 to 8, so pretty short. Draw 4 to 1, you can have a massive 38 to 5 on Swansea, which again is just about 8 at home as well. It's going to be tough for Swansea, isn't it, this season? And there's a couple of rumblings about people have been made as, you know, uh, no, I nearly said scapegoat there. So he's made a couple of cup substitutions and there's been a bit of grumbling about it. Yeah, it just it doesn't look a happy camp. And mm. I think a big factor of that is taking Ashley Williams out of it. You know, on and it's off the right. pitch was a, was a proper, proper leader for them. Um, real man and you can tell that the teammates at national level and at club level really looked up to him. When you take a character like that out of the changing room, it takes a lot to replace it with and I really do think they're going to struggle this year. Yeah, well if you're a Swansea fan and you're watching this and you don't agree with us that think City might go there and win, so I just took one Swansea to win 1-0 just to nick it maybe and frustrate Manchester City 24-1. If you think City are going to score another four goals and fight another 4-1, might be 19-1. Your third one and final one is stoked to, be, to beat West Brom. This is an absolutely <laughs> massive game for the simple reason. Stoke are rock bottom, no wins, got battered by Palace, yep. 
four and, and, and conceding four goals as well, Stoke City. That's not normal, <coughs> is it? It's not. In the week before, I was um, I was at the Tottenham game. Um, mm. My Tottenham scored four past them as well. Yeah. You know, and Stoke. Yeah, if you think of Stoke City, you think strong defensively, hard to play against, hard to beat, and little things aren't just happening for the minute. But I just, I think because of that and. The reason I went for Stoke this week, I, I played under Market Blackburn for two years, mm -hmm. and he's very, very good at when the chips are down, reinvigorating mm. the players and getting them back at it again. Um, and I know the sort of things we'll be doing with them in training this week um, to get them back up there again. And I think people are writing them off, and that's when Mark Cusey's teams are at their best. He's even money to get the sack, which to be honest, I think I'd be happy to lay that because he's not going anywhere near the sack. I think yeah. his relationship with the owner, Peter Coates, is pretty good. Just a bit on Stoke, we need to mention West Brom because the, the, um, it was an incredible result, West Brom. Well, it shows you how much I know, don't it? But for yeah. West Ham to battle well, them last week. Well, West, that, that <laughs> mean, insane, you, you get your treble up <laughs> if, if they can go there and get a result, but I, I can't remember the last time West Brom scored four goals. No, and that was a big criticism that I'd, I'd put at them. Mm -hmm. but that's why I went with West Ham last week because they can't score goals and, and they, they go and score well, 4 0 up at one yeah. point. Um, but great result, big result for them as well. Um, you know, Tony Pulis came out a couple of weeks ago and was talking about um, <coughs> a little bit of disharmony between him and the board. Yeah. I think that's getting sorted out and a great result for West Brom, really is. Stoke 29 to 20 to win, draws 23 to 10, West Brom 21 to 10. It's actually the game I will be at for Sky Sports Soccer Saturday, so I'm looking forward yeah. to that one, I must admit. Stoke to win 2 1, 21 to 2. 1 1 the draw, 20 75. And West Brom, if you think they can go on and get back to back wins, 2 0, maybe 15 to 1, but they're 21 to 10 against. I must admit, I think it's one of these games that I think everybody's going to be fired up for the game. I wouldn't put you off mm. uh, betting Stoke. Now, I don't have an exact uh, odds for you, but um, these prices will be available on price specials on BetSafe. And if you're watching this preview on BetSafe, you just have to look below the video and look to the McAnally and the Dickov treble plugged in and waiting for you to take advantage of. Paul is around eight. Oh, something that. like that. I mean that's what I've that's what my that's what my head is saying. Okay. It's about eight to one. But you'll get the exact uh, price specials on BetSafe. And of course I'll mention again, if you're watching the video, then you just have to go below us and click on the McAnally and Dickov treble. It is waiting for you to get. Uh, and remember, if you're a new customer and you fancy the little dick of treble or the McAnally treble, you can have a £10 bet and you will get a £20 welcome offer. There is nothing to lose. On to my treble. Now, I've stuck my neck on the line a little bit here. Well, not with this one. Liverpool. Uh, I watched them in the middle of the week against Derby. They were sensational. Coutinho was sensational. They beat Chelsea on Friday night and they have the visitors of Hull. I can't see anything apart from Home a Liverpool banker. win. Home banker, that yeah. one. Going forward, they're playing some unbelievable stuff, scoring yep. goals, and he's got options as well. You know, he made a few changes during the week, didn't he? Carrius, the new goalkeeper, yep. came in, did okay. Uh, whether or not he would start in front of Mignolet, I don't know. I think, I think he possibly will, oh, because you know he's p paid a good amount of money for him mm. this summer. Yeah. Um, and when we bought him, I, I thought, well, he's, he's going for the number one place, so I can see him staying in. But going forward, with Origi, with Sturridge with Coutinho, Lallana, they, they, they look really, really good. Not as good as my Man City at no. the minute, I <laughs> must admit, but great to watch, great yeah. football that they're playing at well, the minute. Maybe unsurprisingly, 2-11 to 11 they are. I know it's a skinny one, but I've just thrown it in because I've got a couple of belters coming up. Draw 32-5, Hull 31-2, to two, so you can see that's a huge 15-16. You might even get bigger. Liverpool to win 3-1, 9-1. Liverpool to win 3-2, 29, uh, sorry, 29-1. I do think Liverpool are a good thing. I mean, he's, Hull have done okay, um, and Mike Phelan looks as though he's going to get the job on a permanent yeah. basis, but there's still an uncertainty there, isn't there? It's stupid. It really is. They should just give him. I know there's stuff going on behind the scenes with change of owners and everything yeah. else, but they've started the season. I know they get they get hammered um, by Arsenal last week, yeah. um, but Arsenal can go and do that to, to any team at any Absolutely. time. Um, but they've had a great start, and they've just give them the job and let them get on with it. Correct. OK, because I was getting a bit of stick from my skinny 114, I've gone for a belter here. Now, I might be getting them wrong to... I mean, they're not going and scoring loads of goals for us, but I've gone for Borough at home to beat Spurs. Now, I know Borough got beat by Everton pretty convincingly, but a lot of teams will go to Goodison and get turned over. I just think if they're going to stay in the league, it's games like this they're going to have to take a little advantage of and no keen. Especially at home. Especially at home. You right, know, yeah. for Borough, and, you know, Spurs are playing really well at the minute, we all know that, but... I've said before, you know, when we've done these previews, that I'm a big fan of Middlesbrough and mm. the manager, Ayatar Karanka, um, and I think Negredo is a fantastic signing for them, scoring goals already. Yep. Um, and, you know, I know it's going to 
a bit of a long shot that one, but I can see why you went for them. Yeah, I, I, listen, 31 to 10, you're all getting over 3 to 1 your money, and I just think, I'll be, Spurs have been good, and incidentally, Spurs were the, they were the last leg of my treble last yeah. week, and I was delighted, obviously, they managed to sneak it 1-0 against Sunderland, but of all the chances they, they, or, or possession they had, I think they just struggle, and if they play like that, I think Borough might take yeah, advantage of it. Great point you said about Harry Kane being out, it'll be a big, big miss big for loss. Them. Next one as well, and this is another one I'm sticking my neck in here, uh, Sunderland against Crystal Palace, and I've gone for Sunderland. Why? David Moyes <laughs> is a pal of mine, he says that they've got better at every game, and a little bit like Borough, I think if they're going to stay in the division, then the home games are just massively important, and they've got to get themselves up for this. Now Palace, I know they did score uh, four goals at home against Stoke. But again, that's really the first time they've managed to bag a few goals because they've struggled to get on yeah, the they have as well. Been creating lots of chances, Palace, but not putting them away. But that, that result last week was against Stoke. It yeah. was just brilliant, and you know, watching the highlights of the game, it looked as if they played really, really well, creating lots of chances. And Sunderland are going to have to start picking up results soon. Mm -hmm. A little bit like Stoke, um, and I can see why you went for them because you know Moise will be galvanising them and trying yeah. to get them get that first win, and, and then they're off. I just think it's a winnable game here. You know, I know that Palace, they, I mean, the, the win that looked last weekend was fantastic, but they haven't really started, and, and you know, pardew has been getting a bit of stick. That's yes. had the players as well, and there's been a few ins and outs, and Benteke managed to get a goal, I think it was last week. Spent a lot of money as well, by yeah. the way. So I'm just thinking it might just be one that they can be, be, be pointing their nose at. Sunderland 19 to 10, incidentally. Draw 94, Palace 85, and that is the McInally treble. It's around 15s, and remember, I'll remind you, um, if I was on a little bit of paper to remind you, yeah, you'll, ha you'll be able to, uh, these will be available in price specials on Betsafe, and if you're watching the preview on Betsafe, have a look below the video and you'll see the McInally and Deco treble plugged in and waiting to rock and roll, and it's around 15s, and that is Borough to beat Spurs, Sunderland to beat Palace, and Liverpool to beat Hull. United against Leicester. <sighs> Massive game, isn't it? Three in the bounce, Mourinho. Yeah. Beat. I know, first time in 10 years, is it? <coughs> I think they said. We should say we're doing this on Wednesday afternoon. They play Northampton tonight, yeah. and it could be four in the bounce. I mean, I don't think it will yeah, be. I That's why I said that. three. But um, it's uh, the f the, a, a great. Uh, this is a good start, actually. And, and um, it's really just against Josie Mourinho, which yeah. is a little unfair by me. But it's the first time Mourinho has lost three in the bounce since 2002 at Porto. Yeah. It's a long time. It is, but it's a great record, though, isn't it, <laughs> as well, at the same time. Um, I, th I think it's a tough one to call. At Old Trafford, of course. At Old Trafford. <coughs> Leicester, I think it might suit them being there. Um, away from home. Um, got a great result against Burnley last week. Slimani, who we, who we actually spoke about last week, being mm -hmm. a different option for them as well. Mm -hmm. Scoring a couple of goals. Um, it's going to be interesting with team Mourinho picks as well. You know, his team selection has been getting getting a lot of stick at, um, recently. Just, but that's and and where he's going to play his players as well. But only because, Paul, I think he's, it's, it's not right yet. Yep. I mean, he genuinely hasn't got it right. And... I mean, he probably will never admit it, but he, he knows the team he's picked so far has been really disjointed. And does he play Rooney? Where does he play Rooney? Or does he call and just say, right, OK, I don't care what MD says, this is what I think my best team is going to be and I'm going to stick with it? I think you have to as a manager. <laughs> you know, the man at the mm. top. And Mourinho's experienced enough to do that. And I, well, I'm a big fan of Wayne Rooney, always have been. Um, but his performance last week at Watford, I've never seen him give the ball away as no. much, or a United team give the ball away as much as they did. It was just basic simple errors. Maybe he needs to just sit on the bench a little bit and just contemplate yeah. something before he gets himself revitalated. Maybe. And getting Pogba in a position yeah. where he's going to have an impact exactly. in the game. I still think if you did, listen, Daley Blind's a wonderful football player, but he's never a centre-half no. in the Premier League and I think I think that's something they need to address very quickly. And Bali struggling a bit as well. Well, you know, but he didn't play as well. Of games, yeah. Um, but the last two or three games, he's he's looked as if it's getting to him a little bit as well. I know Leicester get turned over by Chelsea in the week. Extra time it was, of course. Uh, although Vasilevsky sent off for elbow and uh, Costa, it might have been a little bit different. Can you can you is there a, uh, can we go for Leicester at all at United? Or do you think United <sighs> home advantage will be too much? No, I think Leicester away from home this year um, is where you're going to see the best of them. Mm. You know, teams are now going to the King Power and sitting back um, and denying them any space in behind. Mm. Whereas I think with I know, Musa if he plays Slimani, Vardy, Mares. I think with that the attacking threat that they've got on the break, uh, I'm, I'm going to go for Leicester on that one. 9 to 14, uh, United 31 to 10, the draw just over threes, and Leicester 22 to five. So you're getting 92, nearly f nearly fives to be honest. And it's best priced 
bet safe, of course, and to be absolutely honest, I can see both teams scoring, but I would not be surprised if Leicester, in the form they're in, yeah. even though they got beat by Chelsea in the middle of the week, can actually go there and turn them over. Another belter here, and I find this one really tough to call, Arsenal-Chelsea. I do as well. Um, Arsenal went to Hull last week, four goals, four goals yep. again um, last night. They're struggling at home a bit though. You know, for whatever reason, I don't know, away from home, they're, they're going away and blowing teams away. Chelsea did the double in Arsenal last year. Yeah, um, and Costa, you know, he's back irritating, annoying and scoring mm -hmm. goals again, which is great for everybody, great for the league. Fabregas gave himself a huge chance of playing his performance. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Midweek as well, so I th a tough one to call. I mean, and because the game's at Arsenal, Paul, it just has a little bit more pressure on Arsenal psychologically with Chelsea coming to town. Yeah, it does. And you know that they've been stuttering at home hmm. um, and not really getting the performances and results they have done away from home. And I think Chelsea will go there and frustrate them. Um, there's going to be some wonderful players on, on view. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I could see it being a draw. I think there'll be goals. Yeah. But I could see it being a draw. Arsenal 29 20, 12 to 5 the draw. Chelsea 2 to 1. It's, it's a big one. I might even have a little. Listen, if you're a new. New to bet safe and you fancy opening an account with 10 quid will give you 20 pound for nothing. I wouldn't put you past a little Leicester Chelsea double. That would be a nice little one as well. Arsenal to win 2 1, 80, 1 to 10. That's eights. Chelsea to win 3 1. If you fancy it might be all Chelsea, 23 to 1. Paul just said he wouldn't be surprised if it was a draw. 1 1 is 23 to 4. And 2 2 is 21 to 2. West Ham Southampton. Another imponderable. What West Ham are we going to get? Because they are. Having an absolute shock. Struggling, I'm not backing them again. <laughs> <laughs> Last twice now, um, we've done it. But it's just strange. We made some good signings, look really strong. They've got Payet back, um, and nothing's just seemed to go right. And a little bit alarming for me, you know, seeing Slavin Bilic's press conference, and mm -hmm. he's already talking about cup finals this early into the season, which sort of looking from the outside makes you think that everything's all not good and well yeah. there, you know. Oh, it, it, listen. We both played at a level where you know if you're conceding goals, then there's more pressure on us to score goals if you're conceding too yeah. many at the back. But if you concede four goals, it's almost impossible to score five every single week. Defensively, they've been so poor. Yeah, and that's the, been the a schoolboy, problem, yeah. schoolboy defending for the goals. Southampton, great result last week. Um, Treble. Yep. Go on, you know. And I mean, it was tight though. I mean, I can't say they blew Swansea away, but they still got the result. But. Again, it's it's a tough one in comedy West Ham, isn't it? It is, and, but I've got a sneaky suspicion for Southampton. Just everything doesn't seem right at West Ham at the minute. At when, the we new start, stadium. when we started the Premier League preview at the beginning, we all, we well, actually thought that West Ham were, we were raving to, about them. We were going, we were thinking they've got some really good players. Yep. They've got some strength in the team. They've got a terrific manager, and that's not been the case. No, and you see it a lot. And I'm not saying it's purely down to the new stadium because mm. um, you know I they went they went away from home and, <laughs> and yeah. get battered last week. But within the fans, you know, the stewarding, the policing, there's a lot of grumblings at the club at the mm. minute. Fans are fighting with each other at games. Yeah. Um, no segregation, you know. And you know what it's like, big man. If things around you aren't right, it's very mm. hard to go out there and perform yeah, um, to the best of your ability. Exactly. Well, West Ham 95, draw 73, Southampton 85. It's one I would not touch with a barge mm. pole if I was putting it in my treble. Nevertheless, West Ham do need a result. I wouldn't be surprised if that home advantage... Can we call it home advantage yeah. in this new stadium? Yeah. Might just be enough. I mean, just a brief one on the stadium. They were talking about, you know, when, when the ball goes into an area and people are on seats and you start standing up and then there's a domino effect and everybody's standing up. I, I, would, str I would struggle, wouldn't I, would to see really anything. Well, you can sit on my shoulders yeah. and still probably <laughs> not see anything, but that was the kind of problems I think they had at, at, the, uh, at the stadium. Burnley against Watford. Um, I mean, I'm a big fan of Sean Dyche. Yeah. The result for Watford last week against Manchester United was simply sensational. It was. You know, Watford last two games, beating United, going away to West Ham, scoring four goals. And, you know, we, we've spoke about it before. If, if Troy Deeney and Agallo are on form, they, they are a handful for any They certainly look as though the they've got the sights a little bit sharper in the last couple of games. Yeah, they do. But they, they just look an all-round strong team. Hmm. You know, um, the strength and depth as well. You know, Zuniga came on it made a big, big impact against Man United. Um, Burnley losing 3-0 at Leicester. Uh, with it being at Burnley, um, I could I could see that being a draw. Which, you know what, I think Watford would take seven points out of the last nine. Uh, look, after that result last yeah. week, the only thing is, is the bar raised because they beat Man United. Do you think they should go to Burnley and turn them over as well? I think or? a lot of people will be thinking. After yeah. the last two, two results and performances, yeah. you know, seven goals um, in the last two games, so people will be thinking that, but I fancy them to get a draw. 
the unpredictability of the Premier League. Watford 11 to 6 to draw 11 to 5 and Burnley 8 to 5 if they can manage a home win. Remember that McInally treble then. Liverpool, Borough and Sunderland around um, 15s in the day. I've done that the wrong way by the way. I'm definitely mm. higher up. Around 15 to 1 it is. And remember uh, Paul's treble was Everton, Man City and Stoke. And I'll remind you again these prices will, will be available on price specials on Betsafe. And if you're watching the preview on Betsafe we should be down here somewhere, Watford, uh, sorry, uh, Dickoff and McInally Treble, and it's plugged in and waiting for you to take advantage of. Okay then, I think that's just about it. Good luck with your bets at the weekend. Hopefully your sportsbook wallet and bet save will look good after my 15 to 1 treble. It should be looking better after the one we got last week. Hopefully Paul's might hit the bar. Actually, I've already bet your treble, incidentally. Oh yeah, good. Like it. Already done. Uh, I'm Alan McAnally, he's been Paul Deckoff, and remember, don't forget to check out our midweek Champions League betting tips early, because Champions League is next week. Good luck with all your bets at the weekend.